Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues, the A to Z series, in which we're now playing as the Metis Congress, led by Antoine Beausoleil. The liberation of a nation is something that calls upon all its people. Antoine, I'm probably saying that wrong, never dreamed to revel in the mud and slums of Virginia. He dreamed to be remembered throughout the ages, just as the great generals and administrators he read books about did. So when the Metis cried and began to organize, Antoine... Antoine? Antoine. Ant maybe Antoine. Antoine? Antoine? Was there. When a boy was harassed by a police officer, he got a gang in stones and taught them that laws were only what you allowed yourself to be governed by. And when Antoine gained word of a group of looking to fight back against oppressors, he joined. First as a mail carrier along with his best friend, Antoine was eager to show some real resistance. But this movement shied away from retaliating violently or combatively. A code he could not stand for, so he would lead segments into the Boy Scouts in a conflict with the pol uh, police, causing his promotion away from the front lines. During his time, his brother, Etienne, Etienne? 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 would be called to three rivers to connect with merchant resistance fighters. This loosened the elites on Antoine as he no longer had a pacifist voice on his shoulder. Uh, now he flagrantly violated his unofficial demotion and began leading once more the militant members. Antoine began to hear rumors that his fellow resistance leaders had begun sailing him out of, to the police, leading to a firefight and nuclear explosion at, of his fusion flea, an explosion that would rip his arm from his body. Though his comrades would win the battle and save him, the fight was not over. With a new arm from his absent brother, Antoine would set about completely ousting the members who wished to find common ground with the oppressors. In this endeavor, he was successful, waiting excitedly for his brother to return and see the work he completed. But when Etan returned, it wasn't eagerness that greeted him, but rather a cold, jealous child. And so he assigned Etan to a position that would ensure neither would rub shoulders until the situation could be smoothed over. While either side seeking resolution, the distance between the two only grew. From friends to colleagues to rivals, men, the men slowly drifted apart. Victory after victory was achieved during Antoine's march to Manitoba until his campaign was finally stopped in his tracks by Yorkton. Antoine's triumphs would ultimately propel him towards taking leadership over the Congress, although his inability to secure the final victory would haunt him through each of his presidencies. Now he seeks rearmament and a societal reorganization to prepare for his greatest and last campaign. Well, just for reading all that much, but I don't know anything about the Mantis Congress, a revolution. We've always had our land and our people. We've only had our own destiny for brief moments in time. The Trojan of the first... Uh, uh, to have blood for our future are now putting their own lives on the lawn, all for the same dream that has been dreamt for centuries. Nation building. It is not enough to be an independent people, we must also have an inefficient one. Efficient in war and efficient in peace, how will our people have a future if our nation collapses a moment after its birth? Our revolution. Even before the invasion of Canada, the people who lived in and around the Koch have earned, yearned for independence. But even after nuclear devastation ravaged the world, not much changed for the Canadian Great Plains as they were still ruled by an Angloid from the east. Soon, the Metis would find an opportunity once again spill blood for their people's dream. This opportunity would come in the form of merchant unrest in the eastern frontier of the kingdom. And as weapons began flowing into the revolutionary councils in Regina from benefactor to the north and east, it became clearly clearer exactly where the soon-to-be republic would fall in the coming struggles. With the rise of nationalist activity, so too rose police activity from the kingdom's loyal hound dogs. Arrests were swamp clearing and penal labor became rampant and martial law became the norm for those in the urban centers. When the milit Royal Military Police departed north to begin frontier penal reclamation, Antoine was formed of the merchants rise in the east so he ordered his cells to strike and by the end of the day the military police were stranded north of the catch and militias had seized control of the western reaches of the Manchus land. In the coming days it would be decided whether true democracy for the Manchus would have to wait until the nascent revolution was solidified. This disagreement led to the formation of two impromptu parties, the Constitutionalists, who believed an immediate democracy was the only way to prevent the rise of a populist dictator, and the Confedera uh, Confedera Confederalists, headed by the army, who argued that speed bumps during the beginning moments of the er, independence would lead to the loss of said independence. I cannot give dictators time to rise. Give my arm XP. Foundations for replacement. The revolution doesn't have time for laws. Ooh, you know me, I like uh, more political power. Confederalists versus Constitutionalists. Well, I don't know. I mean, you can either do a disgruntled military. Resistance from the Constitutionalists. Hmm. I guess we'll do the Constitutionalists? Maybe? I, I don't know. Uh, multiculturalism. The Metis mixed ancestry, most especially that from the French and Cree, provides them with much greater diplomatic capabilities than is seen throughout most of the wasteland and fosters great ingenuity among the people. As the boys in the field fought against the kingdom's lapdogs, the people of Regina hashed out what centuries of efforts would culminate into. Whether our republic would have a strong central head of power, or if its power should be decentralized to the Senate of Peoples. 
The Confederates argued that with the recent success of the military, a single powerful president with a cabinet of officers from the high command would serve the republic in both war and peace. The Constitutionalists, however, pointed to those same victories as to why the military is perfectly fine without even more power inside the government. These debates would rage for weeks as both parties' leaders, Antoine et Etienne, are off fighting Yorkton for control of the catch or arguing with the Three Rivers merchant leaders for more weapons and aid, respectively. We can allow the military uh, to trample over our democracy. More political power is nice. The momentum of change must accelerate. I'll, I'll be honest, I, I, it doesn't really matter to me which way we go. Uh, raising of rights. A revolt against the Kingdom of Manitoba was successful, but for the cultural identity of the Mectus, it was a pure victory. During the city's prolonged unrest on the eve of our uprising, the Kingdom's Regina Garrison was desperate to buy time for reinforcements from the East. Their efforts were ultimately futile, but by burning many of Regina's libraries, they destroyed many valuable and crucial books on Michif, a language at the heart of our culture which had struggled for survival over centuries. But this attack on our heritage remains fresh in the minds of our people, and substantially damaged our will to serve in any further armed conflict, righteous or otherwise. Diminished fur yields. With the migration of many species following temperature drops or Canada during the Great War's aftermath, the harmful effects of radiation have left their mark in many ways, but perhaps most adversely affected were the mantis. For as many troopers or trappers and hunters were soon discovered, beavers and many other mammals exhibited far lower, sparser growth of the pelts on which the fur trade relied. Given the resurgence the industry experienced in Saskatchewan, the trade provided many on an escape from the poverty that struck central Canadian cities at the start of the American occupation. This ecological change dealt a blow to our economy. It was only worse than under the kingdom's rule, as nobles infringed upon what little right to self-governance we had to ensure a steady supply of the eastern cities. Our ability to adapt and develop alternative industries was severely stifled. Freedom from our previous subjugation has finally provided us with the opportunity to rectify this, but the cultural significance that the trade now bears makes abandoning these occupations to the past an overwhelmingly unpopular idea. Should we find a path to improving the situation, though, the profits it would bring would be all worth the economic downturn we endured and then some. Foundation for the The army cannot be trusted in the realm of politics and diplomacy, so we begin laying the foundation to replace the hawkish, self-interested old guard with the youngest and brightest. Help us minimize their influence on the political scene. Momentum change. Ah, screw it, we'll get this one out to you. Elevated high command. The army requires the power to influence domestic policy as a wage successful wars. I don't know. Development funds from three rivers. The western provinces of the kingdom have never been well developed or utilized, which has left much of our nation stuck in a rut. Luckily, by burning a few bridges out east, we can lobby for some economic aid from our brothers in arms. Etan has recently returned from Transcona with good and bad news. His attempts to secure funding from Three Rivers have proven successful. They have appeared, uh, approved funding to stabilize their industrial base, but Etan isn't the most subtle of diplomats and he's solid a reputation within the Republic. These approved factories would be a multi menu boost for people with standard of living, making our fight for survival more legitimate in the eyes of many of the most hardline naysayers. Sadly, Antoine has returned as well, even with worth, worse news. As attempts across the catch has proven disastrous, with much of his army being wiped out by Yorkton. This loss has allowed the military police in Yorkton to regroup and they've begun marching on Regina. Antoine claims that he must com and come and do the funds to be rebuild the army and save the Republic. And while his loss is undeniable, whether the threat is as great as he claims is entirely unknown, after all. This could be an attempt to ruin Etan's public image and placate a war hawk high command. Public outcry would be catastrophic. The fate of the Republic is on the line. Do we want to be more aggressive or not aggressive? I'm not sure why we have scrap bots. Throw them on there. Uh, mm, I like this one more, but let's go with this one. And Congress is in session. Congress is in session, and such as battles of foreign diplomacy are giving way to debate and deliberation. Although the votes were tallied months ago, now is a true test to see whether the representatives will cure the will of the people or give way to corruption. Oh, I guess we're more for, uh, confederalists. We're elites with Antoine. Congress is in session. Constitutionalists at 10. Uh, settlements and grudges from the tumultuous beginning of the Republic still have their effect echoed in today's congressional meetings. And now the military has led the, has led the country since the revolution, it hasn't been through a junta. Uh, our people decided that it was a sacrifice that needed to be made, and now that the crisis seemed to come to an end, the people must decide once more whether the mandate is a, a rule is a gift to give to the army. Our libera liberty has yet to be secured. So we went with the Confederalists. So we're going to go down this right path, because the left path allows you to form Canada, I think, or something like that, right? Um, I kind of wanted this route, in all honesty. But it's alright. That just means we've got to play it again. Rolling Congress. Rekindle our uh, thingy of wobs. Commitments. Congress of Peoples. Defenders of Free Canada. Congress of Peoples. Well, okay. I'm okay with whatever. 
Uh, bully the opposition. The vo try the voting age of the draft. As it stands with people voting who, in times of great strife, wouldn't be called to defend the Republic. This cannot be allowed to continue. What worse is the fact that these young voters tend to support a radical and subversive organization. So we get, still get more army XP, which is nice. Elevate high command. And constitutional resistance. Oh, dear God. I guess bully the opposition. The only communication these people understand is that of steel and muscle. If they want to destroy the nation, they'll have to do so in, in quietness to avoid a brutal beast down, and then increase congressional guards. The constitutionals have proven themselves that they cannot act in a cordial manner or matter during simple civil debates. Guards must now be employed from loyal military regiments, of course, to ensure the continuation of our valued democratic institutions. Oh. Also, we're using Overall Blues, Overall Blues, um, Radio, Overall Blues Tech Expansion, Overall Blues Generic Decisions Revamped, all the good Overall Blues, you know, submods, too, with what we're doing. Second Coalition. If, uh, if you want to read about this, please go ahead. Okay. So they want to go kill people. That should help stability out slightly, slightly more political power. I do want to increase our political power too. But who do we have here? Conventional warfare land doctrine, that's pretty normal. Anyone unique? Friends in high places, I like that. Holmes Law. Stonks, we like the stonks. Uh, I don't think Regina's a trade node, is it? Okay, come on. Is it? Oh, it is. Look at that. I didn't realize that. Well, we're not going to go to war soon. Increase our political power first. Who would like to build a lab? Rusty. We're going to bully them. Increase congressional guards. Uh, sure. Grease the politicians' wheels. 90 days. Uh, or allow weapons in Congress. I kind of want to allow weapons in Congress. But in a brief panic, a new edict was passed allowing guards and congressmen to brandish personal defense weapons on the congressional floor. Luckily, it seems that most of our representatives are taking advantage of lessened restrictions. Oh, yeah. Nuclear blast over Strath Commune. Oh boy. Personal community. More political power. Nice. Grease politicians' wheels. These slimy grease balls have no agenda or allegiance, making their voices easily silenced with just a fraction of the nation's treasury. Well, we could do that, but nah. We're not going to be grease balls here. We'll just lose a few guns and a little bit of stability some more. That's all. Oh, we're going to lose more manpower. Boom, you know what? I don't want to lose any more manpower. There you go. Nice. Sure. Why not? Uh, we're going with asymmetric warfare for now. Get some colliders going too. We can do more industry stuff as well. 1.7. And citizenship for soldiers. By restricting the total citizenship to oh, you're going to put this please go ahead to only only members and ex members of the military, we can solidify our control and ensure a country is run by the courageous. More political power and recruitable population, which is nice. But we're going to lose monthly population and water and consumer goods and construction speed and factory output. It's a give and take. Oh look at all this! This is different. No mark surplus, warden remnants, Yorkton arms. Arborg Arsenal. You know, in the meantime, let's just go and go with Land Doctrine. We can never go wrong with Land Doctrine. There you go. Oh. The Earl Grey Company. Power Armor. Uh, Hawk Moon Munitions. Rosewood, Rosewood Robotics. The Hudson Bay Company. It's pretty good. History program. Cabal suppliers, that means like docks. Prairie divers, a little different. The CPFs are plus. Hmm. Alright, now that's really focus on industry. Yeah, gotta 
couple of decaf coffee here to keep us nice and uh, satisfied. Yeah, pretty much. You are what? You are going. You're level four, so you're not going to be inspirational anymore. You'll be a life giver and a local leaker. Oh, you're a robotics expert. Oh, I didn't see that one coming. And Lord of the Winter, why now? Oh, prepare for the storm. New World Army, light air technology. Well, we hurt ourselves. Stall military prize, not bad. Over employment in check. Choosing our national heroes. For long and storied past, because as many tales to impart upon younger generations that never knew the struggles of Mantis once endured, but who will be our symbol of hope? The persistent Louis Aurel or the courageous Gabriel Dumont? I have no idea. Teachings of Louis Real. Wasteland makes metis of all of us. Huh. Get more non-core manpower. Weekly manpower goes up. That's not bad. And get more daily compliance. I like that a lot. Expand the definition of metis. Okay, you're done. Stop it. Or, actions of Gabriel Dumont. Army XP. Closed definition of metis. More population. Foundations of civilization. Expand the Metis works. Forged in the history of in the fires of history. Forged in fire. You lose political power, which I don't like, but you get more population, which I do like. It's a give and take. Interesting that we start off with the robot division. Commando, camouflage. Well, hmm. Metis of the modern world. Forged in fire. Foundations, I don't really know. Open our borders. Legacy of the medicine line. I mean, this one does give you more compliance, which I do like a lot. I like some rapid compliance and more political power. I don't want to lose political power. Population won't really matter to me too much. Esteemed politician diplomat, Louis, uh, Louis Rio was a symbol of hope for people who formed the first national committee that fought for our rights in the Red River Resistance. Rio tirelessly sought proper treatment of her people, but was ultimately executed following a political crisis of a trial. Despite this, we still carry his ideals much farther than any non-indigenous Canadian has carried theirs, or the actions of Gabriel Dumont. Gabriel Dumont was a brave warrior who fought in countless battles to defend the safety and security of all Metis. Unlike his contemporary counterparts, Dumont was swift to act against the droves that put our lives in danger. Uh, let us light the hearts of our young ones that with the tale of the greatest general to ever live. Foundations of civilizations. Hmm. Hmm. We'll go out with a blaze. Let's go with this one. The teachings of Louis Rio, which I'm sure, like I said, I'm saying wrong. We're on all four fronts. Oh. Oh, you're on this. Please go ahead. Boop. Thank you. Chief of the Army, pretty generic. You guys are also pretty generic. Even more, you know what? I want even more Army XP gain. Yeah, this, uh, this war is up here is not very easy to do, but it is what it is. Uh, can we go to war with uh, these guys next? The unbound or south of a skirmish with our border force at endless times. Instead of letting them sack and pillage your countryside, let's destroy the so called unrestrainable. Raiders have no place in a Congress. No, oh, thank you, Middle Mark. Hope you open up your store soon. Embrace the trap wave life. There you go. Hope it would probably be nice. Let's go and expand army training too. It's really helpless boost at 0.84. Wow. That ain't bad. Conscript sergeant. I usually like sergeant. Darn, we're all out of coffee now. What's this? Yeah, worker shortage. Yeah, could be worse. Ah, now they're killing each other. Good. I guess we probably could go up there. Oh, well. A little more expensive because of self-sufficient society, huh? Well, I like more money. Political power, stability. It's not to love. Ka-ching. 
Let's go promote the node too. And let's get even slightly more army XP gain. Yay, 0.9 now. Great job, Regina. Can't promote that, darn it. Okay. 11 division is not bad. We are still mobilizing. Get these more special forces stuff. You know what? Take one off, put one back on. So we start making a few planes here too. Ambush equipment's okay. Yeah, I don't like this. I'm be a scavenging program. No, there's any bonuses? Yes. We need that uh, manpower badly. Uh, Plea of security. Well, daily compliance gain. Over the centuries, the true identity of the Metis have been heavily questioned by cynics, both within and without. What does it truly mean to be one of us? Perhaps we should act more tolerant towards all those who share our ancestors and legacy? Maybe? Maybe. Don't have to. Let's see. Um, what would this group? You're, you know, you could use a little more inspiration here. You already have up to 20 slots. That seems pretty good to me. And we're about ready to go. I have a little bit of a fun time with these guys. You, know, you guys keep these guys in place. It's fine. You go here. You don't need to intensify that. Probably. You probably don't. Hey, orders. Nice job, guys. Really get that army XP going. Oh, look at that instrument up here, too. Need even less supplies. Can we go to. No, darn it. Oh, manifest. Robot research speed. Well, that wouldn't be the worst thing possible. Uh, depending on how many divisions they have, you might do this. They have one division down there. more political power too. Open our borders. For far too long we've kept our borders uh, closed outsiders. If we truly want to carry on the memory of real, we must be more accepting of our neighbors. To prove we are not hypocrites, we must treat them as fairly as we treat our own people. This may cause tension among the hardliners, but it's for the greater good of the Congress. We're working nice. Good stuff. Oh, it's March now too. Alright, so that's the case. Come back over here and do that one. Struggling down here, but it makes sense. You guys are completely cut off now. It's good. And we're going to raise conscription level? No, we're not. We're going to go to Relic of Darmy. It's going to build more and faster. Good job, guys. Well, okay, no one wants to go in, no? Well, this will be a thing. Very good. Scooby? Oh, Scooby. <laughs> oh, Scooby, 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 Doo. Scooby, Doo. Scooby, Doo. Scooby, Doo. Well, alright, if you want to go in here, that's fine too. Yeah, help me out. Alright, cool. Pass fine. So it needs more spec ops off. State of Moose Jaw. Let's see what they say. Good. Like I said, the medicine line. Oh, if I was the apocalypse, yeah, they could be meant this too if they want. The U.S. Canadian border along the 49th parallel, or as we know it, the medicine line, split hundreds of families from their loved ones once it began to be enforced. The line was an arbitrary border that split our people in two and led to the rights of our tribe being ignored. Let us reunite with some of the tribes south of the line and can find kinship once more. Yeah. I mean, it's weekly manpower is plus 10, it's not much. But that's better than nothing. How much money do we have? Not that much. Uh, grant the bases. Sure, why not? Stability. And training. Build, 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 build. Uh, outsider stuff. We could... Uh, oh, work of battalions. It's often said that one must win on the factory front. Well, let's mobilize and bring the fight to production. Uh, harvesting season is over. Uh, worker shortage is down to here. 
All right, harvesting exemptions. Place farmer shortage. We still have farmer shortage, which is not the worst thing. The sent us uh, eyes. Purpose. Well, that's still going to be bad. And still military pride. Though creating a culture and military that emphasizes the values of duty and patriotism alongside better material care and support for veterans, we can ensure a strong sense of loyalty in the population and provide our soon-to-be citizens with optimism for what awaits them at the end of the service. That sounds pretty good. I wouldn't mind getting this one next, too. And we got a, a whole moose jaw thing here, too. Darn it, no longer increasing your power. Hmm. Passive caps. Caps income. Seems like I want money. And I do. Because I don't have enough in my real life. The only money I make are caps. Go and train. It's fine. Alright, so after that... Uh, I guess with the population boom from recently acquired territories, we can finally enter rampant over-employment. Hmm. Well then. A plea of sincerity. Moose Jaw is a peaceful place, even to a fault. But this peace can only get them so far in the resurgent battlegrounds of Canada. Antoine must make his case to the Everett and his people to join the Congress as an equal. We can not allow the innocence of their land to be ruined by the electorate or the encroaching Stampede. Because you know the Stampede wants to come kill us too. Uh, good. I have no war sport though. Hey! Hello, infantry division. We definitely gotta make you better. Oh, hello. Alright, you got it at least between the numbers now. God dang it. Mm. Never mind. Peace and sincerity. What is this? Exploitation of the frontier. We should begin utilizing the newly reclaimed lands. The real estate of these nations should be used for the increased defense of the Congress, and those not employed for the defense of democracy have no right to relish in its gifts. Because we got something to do up here, too. The strength of our heritage. Huh. Mobilize hunters. Interesting. Expert navigators. Beavers balance breakfast. Industrial heart. The mines. Provisions for arms bartering. An audience with a Tokala. Well, it looks like they decided to accept us. Good for them. Darn, I want more war. Whatever. The rest instructions go with land tactics, because that only makes sense to me, at least my mind. Better support equipment? Yes, please. That'd be nice. Yeah. Lower tariffs, that's fine for now. What was this whole stent stuff to? Stent security, ballistic weapon speed, reliability, defense breakthrough. You know what, sure, why not? We'll go with that one for now. Essence of the culture and endeared language. Modernize our stance. Chose local initiatives. Better just fight workless times. Federalize the revitalization. Achieve frustration efforts. To me, if we close ourselves off, we could federalize it and have restore what we had in the past. Uh, nationalizing schooling, compulsory education, release former noble properties, linguistic revival. That sounds like the way we should go if we want to close ourselves off. Like, if we chose this route, you know, the foundations of civilization, expand the Metis works, forge the fires, versus broad literacy improvements. We're pushing forward, we're making uh, improvements. Except variants to distinguish the culture and language, safeguard history, 
We are forward thinking here. We're embracing the ways that makes all of us, which makes sense to me. Um, oh, and the assimilation. Sway the southern farmers. What is this one? The so-called Great Stampede is nothing more than an overgrown tumor which feeds on the people it conquers the furthest conquest. This erasure culture must be put to an end before there's no one left to liberate. Versus revoke the Manitoba Act. We've given the Canadians the right to rule under threats and torture, while now town is going to repeal our support and crush the Angloids in fear in the final stronghold in the West. Over the front. Source of the Red River. You get three cores here, which is pretty nice. But you get cores here too. Four cores. Cores all states also scored by the unbound though. Clear the Rift Raft. Crush Dreams of Canada. I don't know about that. Our home upon the river. Out of the chief, out of the people. I think I want to go with end the assimilation. So called Great Stampede. Goes bye bye. Let's see this one next. Unity in the face of tyranny. By leveraging the destruction caused by outside forces, we can assimilate our gathered peoples fully into our nation. And while we are by no means devils, it is better the ruler you know than the one you don't. Yeah, so we get four free cores, and then the cores all by the unbounds. And if we need to go to war before we just go straight up to war with them, that's fine. Nice. Sure. Um, there we go. Oh, we need to spin on the train. 3 days, not bad, but I much prefer 0.9. Should have literally tripled what we're doing here. Great. Establish themselves. More science points. Help settlements out. Are we missing any water? No. Contact loss, of course, today with this contact. Getting dongs. Proof country management. More stability, yes. Uh, research speed. Uh, it's not bad. And the assimilation. Support commits good. Support the New World Tribes. While well, the people have come into conflict with other tribes in the past, it's wise to put our best foot forward in this desolate wasteland we occupy. Instead of shunning and picking fights with other peoples, let us embrace them with open arms and diplomacy that undoubtedly strengthen us all to do so. Well, we'll see what happens. You know, we'll try our best to be diplomatic, and if they don't want to be diplomatic, well, then we'll force them to be diplomatic. Yeah, yeah, that's how we're going to spin this whole thing. Can't do that too. We found the expedition. Oh. Fine, whatever. Um, major businesses, huh? I always like getting more support equipment. It's always nice. Caps income, the Hudson Bay Company. You know what? I want more money. Nice. Good stuff. Give me more support equipment. Do everything unique here. Power through nepotism. Better leadership military first. I don't want her political power, men over bullets. Um, and we'll go next. Keep the Air Force? Sure, why not? Permanent 50% reduction in coring costs for all original core states of safe haven in the Great Stampede alongside the South Saskatchewan River. That's not bad. Uh, it's February. Let's get some radios. Good. Anti tank is good. Cam companies, because men are important. Numbers are important, my friends. You need that one too. Did we get all 20? Yeah, we did. Okay, my bad. Whatever. Send them out. Let's see what you can do. Oh, what is this? The Gabriel Institute of Learning. Well, let's do this first. Recon. Hey, recon would be good too. That waste that makes us about us. Uh, caring for the ideals of our ancestors has brought upon us an age of profound acceptance and prosperity. For now, thousands more embrace their true past and fine belonging. The uh, glory to the Congress, long live the memory of Louis Rio, who replaced the previous to gain ideas with a single more powerful idea the menace of the modern world. With the manpower, plus 15. Nice. Uh, so let's come over here. Uh, or not. 
scientists. Oh, a couple labs. So, grant asylum to the Makawi family. Interesting, not bad. Grant religious freedom to the children of the father's sin. Protect con remnants from more genocides. And then, child refugees from the electorate. Ooh, daily army XP, command XP, division. Yeah, let's go with that one first. We can only move forward as a people. We choose to learn from our mistakes and each other's uh, successes. Yeah. Now who can we go to war with? What else? Oh, we can just go to Safe Haven. Oh, you're in County? Oh, that's nice too. And we got a lot of infantry division. Doesn't mean they're any good though. Knowledge is nice though. Cool. And there goes Robot City. Goodbye, robots. I didn't even know you. Increase political power, spread propaganda. All good stuff, of course. Uh, raising Virginia. We got a lot of stuff to do still here. Nice. Healing powder, good. We're going to throw that on as well. Do we have enough support equipment? Yeah, we should have enough. You guys are going to take a lot of hits anyway, so you, you get to start off with the chems. And help supplement that. Uh, I want that one, but how about with the aid? It's 10, it's very cheap. So we have this in the farmers. This farmer south of the catch, once so crucial to the feeding of the stampede, have been liberated. Only recently been uh, taken into the fold of raiders that are quite ecstatic to return of normalcy. What has taken us by surprise, however, is that these peasant farmers are very politically literate, leading us to wonder where they get the breath of democracy from. It's a shame the history has been destroyed by Crazy Horsemen. What an absolute shame. Face down the electorals. That would be bad. Uh, prepare for the storm. We've always been interested in the protection of our people, even so far as taking the initiative and proactively striking down any potential future threats, and have left to fester, could very easily come to back to bite us. To this effort, our training regimen requires a routine test of all soldiers, ensuring every person in this army is fit to serve. Output and construction speed. Better guns already, nice. Here's that BB army training. guys can have the demo teams first. Redmond and Flames? Oh no! Who could have seen that one coming? Alright, so at this point, let us stop training. You know what? Let's, let us save. I don't think we're going to do superb here. We'll see. We do get quite a bit of money though. But I want more. Morality for scientists? Humanitarianism? Let's go with that one. Prepare for the storm. They don't immediately start attacking us. Darn. Uh, how about you guys go here and send half of you guys here with them? See what you can do. Oh, they're sending their own special forces too, huh? Makes sense. Vacuum tubes, burn it to radio. Are you done? I don't think so. Come on. There you go. Alright, so that's the case. We're going to do it like this. You're literally just here to help hold the line. You guys are here to help push through. I guess we got three divisions of them. That's good. Um, and they're going to be pushers. You're going to need chems, you're going to need some anti-tank, and you're going to need some recon. Waiting for the fire teams. Oh, yeah, we're definitely out of stuff, aren't we? Prepare for the storm. Legacy in the, of the North American fur trade. As we come face to face with the wasteland's hardships, it's important that our sense of unity endures them. We should labor not to forget the lessons of our people's history. Yeah, that'd be bad if you forgot your history, man. Really bad. 
Looking good. Well, beating them while they're down. Nice. Can you go straight to the capital? Alright then. I guess so. And after that, you're going to go here too. No, I'll just do that. You know what? No. There you go. Let them exhaust themselves a little bit and then go in and have fun with it. Oh, hello. Well, it's a desperate attempt for them to break out. It's not going to work, obviously. Strength over heritage. Our people's mixed ancestry originated in the 17th century when the French merchants seeking to strengthen the fur trade came into contact with various indigenous tribes. Although the European colonization Canada was not free from strife for many indigenous people, these trappers and tribes developed mutual respect as they built a robust network of settlements and trading posts across the continent. This was concurrent with unions made between French settler men and indigenous women. These common law marriages were known as uh, mar marriage à la façon du pas, according to the custom of the country. Due to the mix of European and indigenous tradition, and they formed the firm backbone of the entire fur trade. Although trading companies first opposed this, indigenous peoples and European settlers both encouraged it as economic ties created by these intermarriages led to a stable, prosperous exchange. They do form a deep symbiotic, uh, symbiotic relationship. As the men orchestrated the trade and barter for European goods, the indigenous women led their boats down the rivers, taught them to use the land's resources, prepared with swaths of essential tools, cured food for expeditions, and helped manufacture their canoes. It was these unions, spurred on by pragmatism and strong social bonds, that brought them the ethnogenesis of the Metis. Although the landscape of the North America changed over the centuries, our vital role in the trade continued, and our efforts to bridge cultural gaps persisted even as a conflict arose. We come from a lineage of skilled hunters and trappers, but also of negotiators, both trappers and diplomats. These traits have formed the backbone of a culture that have guided us in withering away, weathering many storms, from hostile governments of the past to the anarchic wasteland of the present. But with neighbors east and west so threatening to destabilize Canada once more, we must rely on them further to secure the safety and well-being of not just our people, but all of the free people of the North. Indeed. Well, self-sufficient society, huh? Well, we need to have self-sufficient society. Do we have that here? Self? Sufficient forces? Oh, it's raising Regina. Duh. Which is going to take a while for us to get down there. So, essence of culture. From the trials of colonization to American occupation, the Machif language endured, but the book burning that the kingdom conducted during their own campaign to eradicate it dealt a serious blow, and so went up in flames more of the few remaining records of the language that anchored our national identity. With enough investment, collective knowledge of the Machif could be restored, but in an unforgiving waste, then we must assess just how large of a price we're willing to pay. Oh, wow, we're already at 100. Nice. Um, yeah. Hey, you want to like help them out? It'll be pretty quick. There you go. All right, attacking again. You should have attacked harder earlier. They have fire teams, but still. This stuff hasn't changed at all, has it? And an endangered language. Perhaps characteristic most emblematic of the Mentis is their language. The chief includes multiple distinct dialects, all of which entail a combination of Cree and French with parallels of a mixed nationality. Over the 19th and 20th centuries, the Machif faced serious decline due to center settler colonialism in Canada, with speakers in amounts as low as triple digits. 
Surprisingly, this course was averted in part due to the otherwise detrimental American occupation of Canada. Faced with harsh rule and the constant threat of informants, Metis resistance fighters adopted Michi, particularly forms that borrowed more heavily from Creed than French, as a means of secure communication. The effectiveness of the strategy coupled with greater isolation due to strict rules and travel led to Michif literacy skyrocketing before the Great War and during thereafter. That is until the King of Manitoba, with the benefit of hindsight on American occupation's failures, saw fit to eradicate Michif, which I'm sure I'm saying wrong. Manitoba strictly enforced the outlawing of languages the Crown did not officially recognize. Over decades, this policy literacy rates dropped dangerously low once again. This reached a boiling point when at the onset of a rebellion, Manitoba set aflame Regina's libraries and the records within. This barbaric act made our victory a much less joyful one and diminished our people's appetite for further conflict, but with Manitoba on the brink once again, it seems we have little choice in the matter. The community and government leaders must decide on a course forward to protect Machif and a culture broadly. A culture broadly. Reformers argued that historical preservation for future efforts is the most pragmatic approach given the attention foreign threats demand. Meanwhile, others assert that a costly endeavor, which fully restores Machif prominence and a still strong national identity in the population, would create a much stronger people. Local initiatives will succeed with support. Federal involvement is the only way forward. Uh, local initiatives. The extinction of Machif, which would be a terrible loss, but there are greater concerns facing your people than the widespread use of language. You must choose a more pragmatic approach, preserving your language and history with inexpensive programs on a local basis. Future generations can continue the work, but only if there's a free people left for them to inherit. That is what it is. Abo Junta. Which I'm sure I'm saying wrong too. I say most things wrong, apparently. Maybe do we know that? Regulated check markets. Very good. Very nice, very nice. Just start beating up here. Up mouth. Yeah, get some help. It's always good to have help. Oh, we lost a towel, but that's alright. We've got a lot of manpower just because we have not increased our infantry level size. There you soon enough. White water please, yes please. Wasteland intuition, very nice. Modernize your stance. Hmm. Broad literacy improvements. Our population's level of English literacy is far from the worst in the wasteland, but concerns of Machief had led to a stagnation recently. Improving our overall standards of education will allow citizens to act on pre-existing civ civicism and help us preserve traditional knowledge. Forces. It's not bad. Um, we do have a few more demos. Fire teams or anti-tank? Well, we have no anti-tank. We have no fire teams. I'll go anti-tank then. This way it prevents us from making any more divisions for now, too. Which is exactly what I want. And we're about to drop our manpower to zero. Yay! Look at that fat zero. Alright, let's see what we can do. Hopefully we can get to do well. Because why would you want to do poorly? Big market shack bubbles. Old wool blues. Well, okay then. Alright, we got him. Thank you, Uranium County. It's been a pleasure. So now we can go to war safe haven too.
Oh, they're War of the Great Stampede. Atomic Theory, no, I need to stop. Mm. Broad literacy. Now we're doing that for a reason here. Hierarchy of needs. What hardliners own the language issue miss when they look upon our people is just how strong their national priority is. Cultural identity can't just be legislated by government. The more secure citizens are in the day-to-day -day lives. The greater time and desire they'll have for engaging with their history. Settlements, increase their power, army training. Okay, now this is getting pretty bad over here, but it is what it is. 195 is better than 1,225. Cultural advisor, person in the community. I'm still going to grab that. I like the pee pee. Snap that at a time. So I also want that weekly manpower as well. Now I want to see if Safe Haven can take them out by themselves. Maybe not. Maybe they can. Maybe they can't. I don't know. If they start losing, well then we're going to go in. But if they don't, we'll do what we have to. Hierarchy of needs. Very nice. Uh, rebel the cultural centers. Well, let's do that in just a little bit. If anything... Over employment in check. Finally, we stabilize the population while keeping an enlisting side. Our factories and fields are running without delay, and our military is full of recruits fresh to defend democracy. Oh. We have no ports. Well, I guess we need a port then. Naval base. Naval dockyard. Uh. Here, build one here, I guess. And then keep building Regina. Nice. Up next, we're going to research uh, fire teams, too. Let's get a little distraction until we got over here. Alright. Face down the electorals. The People's Front of Canada was uh, an okay attempt at reforming a, at every, a very barbarous and horrific nation, and these horrors have only grown with time and radiation exposure. We're nearing the footsteps of the last vestige of Canada, and there can be no avenue for escape for the monsters therein. Pleasantdale, Rosewoods, or St. George. Church of the Silo. Ro oh, Rosewood. Pleasantdale, oh, or St. George. They're still killing themselves up here. Alright, looks like they're losing. We have to go in. Do that as long as you encircle them. Take one tile here, we should be okay. Good. These guys are kicking our butts right now. Kind of tired of this. Just go ahead and force the attack. They must die. Well, we got two spots. 
Make it three? Oh, just maybe. Hey. Now you're gonna just find us. Um we're definitely not gonna have any robots, so. do this one. Provisional Government of Manitoba. The Metis people have secured their nation and now their future. Long before Canada had provinces out west, the Metis governed with the name of Manitoba. Our people always have a deep connection to this place and so will our government as well. You know, let's go and just find them too. Oh, we can go straight to go to war with them. Oh, we can just go straight to war with them next. If they get into another conflict, we can kill them off too. That wouldn't be a bad idea. So we're just missing a lot of stuff here. But go down to two. We need a few more guns as well. Oh, we get a banner. Oh. Oh, okay, we get a banner rifle territories. Uh, nuclear mastery. Go to more labs. Yes. I really want to promote this node as much as possible first before we upgrade it. Good. Governorship of Moose Jaw. But overall, not too bad. Um, the gang is pretty good. Uh, the New World Army is sound pursuing new doctrines that may strengthen our forces so when we move on with the refining our forces, tactics, and efforts. New World efforts to protect our people and strike down our foes, opening the door to much more. That'd be great. Well, that's good too. A sense of preparedness. By having our soldiers prepare for whatever may come their way, we can ensure that their lives are safe even more so if they're completely kitted out head to toe in whatever they may need. Call upon veterans of the revolution. Our vote was pieced together by those sick of Manitoban rule. Unorganized in its essence, those who fought and did so with a fierce passion for freedom from the crown in their heart. The passion still has a place in our army and it could be refined and become a sharp tool against our enemies. Regina Aviation Development. Investigating the old airfield near Regina revealed the presence of antique high, uh, biplanes with engines in semi working condition. The warehouses within uh, which they resided are guarded by garrisons from the kingdom with the con contents kept se secret, no doubt with their eventual hope of accumulating the necessary resources to transport them east. Now that we've accessed, we can start further on research. Airfield restoration. Southeastern Saskatchewan was home to many airstrips in the hay its heyday. With the newly acquired knowledge, we could stand to benefit greatly for with returning them to working condition. Doing so also allows us to refurbish some of the more rudimentary aircraft held nearby in the process, and then prairie flight training. Oh. Walking back before the Great War, the Canadian prairies were the site of extensive pilot training due to their vast and open nature. The same attributes could prove just as useful to us in the modern day. But I think I'll end it there. We've done very well as the good old uh, Metis Congress and soon to be Manitoba. If you enjoyed the first episode of us playing as this group, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow when we'll probably have to kill off the kingdom of Manitoba. Thanks for watching, and have a tremendous rest of your day.